Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle that comes hugely recommended by our Discord server. Uh, and by the way, if you've not checked out our Discord server, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's full of lots of very, very smart and nice people with a love of Sudoku of pu of, and puzzles. So it's like the, I don't know, the best nerd party every day over there. Um, there's a link under the video if you've never gone there, definitely check it out. Um, the puzzle itself is called The Devil's Arrows, which sounds a bit intimidating, and it's by Listesh. Um, and in fact, Mark covered one of Listesh's puzzles just the other day about the movie Alien. Um, and I did enjoy that video, although I did note that that puzzle was very hard indeed. So I don't know how hard this one will be. Uh, I have no clue. Um, you will know from the length of the video. So yeah, fingers crossed. Um, before I read you the rules, anything else to mention? Well, just do check out Patreon as well at the moment. We've got all this extra content over there. Um, Mark has solved a recent Matt Gaffney American crossword. That's the most recent edition. But just before that, we've got Scott Strosal's Sudoku Challenge, which we're still getting solutions for. And of course, Tan Tan Dai going through Glum Hippo's arrow, uh, average arrow Sudoku, I should say. So lots of good stuff. And of course, there's a whole litany of stuff before that too. Now, let's look at this puzzle today. What have we got going on? Normal Sudoku rules. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So completely standard killer Sudoku rules. So in the 45 cage here, those digits have to add up to 45. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you will know therefore that these have to be the digits one through nine. I mean, we know that anyway, in a way, because obviously the digits one to nine have to appear in every row, column and box of the Sudoku and cannot repeat within a killer cage. So a nine cell cage must contain all of the digits. So this clue, this cross, well, this crossword, this Sudoku even gives you a clue as to what the numbers one to nine add up to by putting the 45 up there. Um, what else? Digits along an arrow must sum to the digit um, in that arrow's circle. Right, so we've got some yeah, we've got quite a few arrows in the grid. So that means those three squares there, if we make those squares, I don't know, one, two, and three, this would have to be a six, not a 67. Ah, it's gone wrong, <laughs> the six, because one plus two plus three equals six. That's how that bit works. And the gray squares contain even numbers. That's those three. And the gray circles are odd numbers. So we've got more odd numbers than even numbers. So even squares, but that should all help. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as always. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, right, what do I see first of all? The answer is not, <laughs> not a great deal. Um, no longer surprised by this. I mean the 14 cage and the 6 cage, they're just two ways of making each of those totals. This is five nine or six eight, and this is one five or two four. Uh, but clearly, that's not going to get us a digit at, at this stage, at least. Um, right. Well, this this is a three cell arrow, and we've already looked at this when we were doing the examples. But there is no way I can make this add up. These three squares add up to anything less than six. Um, so this circle is six seven eight or nine. And if it was eight or nine, we would know immediately what the 14 cage was. Ah, all right, here we go, here we go. We can do a little trick on column one, look. Now there is something that um, we've seen in arrow Sudoku before, which is that if you think about an arrow um, combined with the circle, these four cells here must add to an even number. How do we know that? Well, whether this total here is odd or even, once we add it to its its pet partner here, it will become even. So if this if these three add to an odd number, an odd number plus an odd number is always an even number. And of course, an even number plus an even number is still an even number. So these are even, that's even. 14 last time I checked was even. The column overall adds to an odd number because it adds to 45. So we've got all those being even. This converts the overall total to odd. So this must maintain the parity and must be even. 
and therefore it's two, four, six, or eight. Now I admit that is not a most the most revealing of deductions, but it does feel like it's at least something that's worth mentioning. Uh, right, I don't like. What are we going to do next? We've got. I mean, obviously we've got these forty-five cages, but. I really have not got a clue. These are sort of, it's like half a Windoku, if you've ever done Windoku Sudoku. Windoku has these, all four of these uh, cages, if you like, but this one only has two of them. We've got more, ah, okay, we've got more arrows over here. So this, this triple, that's got to be at least six, seven, eight, or nine as well. This one as well, that's a similar, that's six, seven, eight, and nine. Obviously these, well, whatever this is, it can't be repeated in those two. Is that meant to tell us something? Is there some trick we can do if that's... Uh, I'm not sure that there is, I mean, it's... No, I mean, it's even possible, I think, for this to be six and this to be seven, because this would be one, two, four. So this could be a two, four pair. This could be a one, three pair, and the two would hide there. Um, bother, how on earth do you do this then? Are we looking, is it geometry I've got to look at? Um, so what do I mean by geometry? Well, things like the Fistmafel ring, but that does not look like it's interesting here. So the Fistmafel ring tells us that these yellow cells here are the exact same digits that appear in this ring. Um, a variant of Fistmafel. We've looked at a few of those recently as well, but there's, there's one that involves those cells, but I think that maps onto these cells and maybe the corners. So that doesn't look terribly good either, does it? Ah, um, we have got, ah, uh, what was the one? There's Ard van der Vettering's version of Fistemafel. See, I'm getting quite good at learning all these variations of Fistemafel. That maps something like those cells. I can't quite remember what this maps to. It's something like this, these 16 cells are equal to these 25 cells plus one set of the digits one to nine. But even that's not quite right, is it? Because I need something really that overlaps there. So at least I know something about all the cells. Or even, yeah, even up here, look, we know something about all of those cells. Yeah, actually, those are the same shapes. Oh, okay. oh, ah, right. Okay, sorry, sorry. I've spotted something now, and I was slow as ever to spot it. Right, this shape is the same as this shape. Whoa, whoa. Uh, as this shape. These two rectangles here. Now these, yeah, these rectangles contain the same digits. How do I know that? Well, very simple. Um. What digits are in those four rows of the Sudoku? Let's highlight them. Obviously, this um, these four row, four complete rows of the Sudoku will contain four complete sets of the digits one to nine in some order. We don't know what the order is. We don't need to know. Why don't we need to know? Well, I don't really care actually. But let's look at the um, let's compare these four rows to these four columns. Now these four columns also contain the digits one to nine four times. So we know that this set of digits I've just highlighted and the original set of digits are exactly the same set of digits. 
Well, what would happen, therefore, if I remove uh, this rectangle, this orange rectangle, oh, sorry, square, in fact, blah, orange square, from both of those sets of, um, both of those, yeah, sets of the digits one to nine. So we've got four sets of the digits one to nine here. I'm going to remove this, whatever digits happen to be in this square from that. And I've obviously got four sets of the digits one to nine here. And I'm going to remove that same square from that. QED, we can therefore say that this purple and this green are the same set of digits. Now, why am I interested in this? Well, I'm interested in it because combining all of this guff we've got in the top left and the bottom right, you can see at least I know things about all of these squares. So I am hoping we will be... Ah, look, I can know one simple thing I can do. I can just remove the 45 from both of those. There we go. So now I've got... Now I've got these cells are the same. That's really weird. So these 11 digits, whatever we put in there is the same as whatever we put in here. Ah, ah, so it's parity. It's, well, I'm going to be able to get this. This is very, very clever, actually. This is parity. It's, it's nothing to do with actual sums, I don't think. I think it's to do with parity because I know the parity of the purple. Because it's an odd digit plus an even. That's still odd. Plus more evens. It's still odd. Plus that, it's now become even plus these two, it's still even. And I've only got this arrow left. And we know that the sum of an arrow plus its circle is always even. So purple is even. Now, this is even. That individually is even. That means those three squares must add to an even number in order to make sure that green is even. And if they individually add to an even number, that it's the circle from which these three cells emanate is also even. That is absolutely, I mean, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's not giving me a digit, of course, but it is very, it's very original. I really like that. Um, now, now we know there's a one on both of these arrows um, because, well, we do. Three cells that add up to six must need a one. Three cells that add up to eight need a one. And you can't put a one in an 11 cage that size uh, two cells in size because this, this would require a 10 in there. So now there's no one here. I mean, there is someone here, it's me, but you know what I mean. There's no one in that square. Now I'm thinking about where for where I've got to put a one in this 45 cage. It's not there and it's not there. So there's a one here. Oh, that's gorgeous. This so our first digit in the grid is row nine, column nine, and row nine, column nine is a nine. How do we know this? Because where does the one go in this 45 cage? I still don't know really where it goes, except it's got to be in one of those three cells because it can't be here because of the ones there. It can't be in this foursome because of the ones here. So it's definitely there. It's in one of these three. And now look, where do you put a one, if you want to, along this bottom arrow? Nowhere. It can't go here because of the one there, and it can't go here because of the ones here. So if this arrow cannot have a one on it, what can it add up to? Well, the minimum we can put on it is two, three, and four, and this square is a nine. And therefore that one is not a nine. Therefore this, this arrow now has a one on it. <laughs> um, doesn't really help us with the 14 cage. Ah, but... Ah, but hang on a minute. We've now got to... Just thinking about this. I've got to put... The 14 cage has to have a 9 in it, doesn't it? Because if the green cells are the same as the purple cells, 
and they are whether this is six or eight there can never be another six or eight in the greens because even if this is eight you can't make eight with three in three digits it's either one two five or one three four so the only way given we're only allowed to use these digits in these cells the only way we can make the 14 work is with five nine so now and that tells us the parity of this I need a five if I need a five and I do I can't have this being a six because these would all be one twos and threes this is eight one of these at least is a one two five triple that is just it's beautiful setting it really is um, okay it's beautiful setting but it's still I've only still only got two digits six cage there is that I now can't have a five in it in this position so there's no one here so this is either one two four and this is either five two four no sorry I don't think that's actually that interesting is it um, this square in the 11 cage has got to be it's got to be commensurate with this being an 8 so the maximum size of this digit is 5 but it can be 2 3 or 4 as well bother so that's 9 8 7 or 6 so somehow we've got to i think we've got to limit these squares by reference to what we know about this I've got to put two ones. Okay. Ah, right, right. Hang on. I've got yes, yes. These the right. Where do we put two ones in the purple? These squares mean you can't put ones in those. So I have to put two ones in this string of digits. Well, I can never put two. I can never have this as a one, therefore, because now I can only put one in that by the by Sudoku. So if there's not a one here, there's not a one in those two squares this has to be a one because i can't put two ones in those three squares without breaking sudoku so this is a one and that means that's a one <laughs> this this must be a one because i can't put one in the arrow now because the i can't make these squares both equal zero and I, this can't be a one anymore because it's in the same box so that's a one now where do we put the one in this oh no it can go in two places in the 45 cage um and this total now what's this going to add up to hang on what is this going to add up to that is a quite an interesting question it can't add up to five and it can't add up to more than five because there's not going to be a digit that's more than five in the green so it must add up to four because we can't put three ones on the line so it must add up to four and this is a two I think that means that's not a four So now, what have I have I learned anything new about the composition of this? I know one of these eights at least is one, two, and five, so that would take care of those three squares. If this is, you know, you see what I mean. I don't know what the order of the nine and the one is. The nine is taken care of by this pair as well. The eight, I've not put the eight in actually. Uh, the eight looks like it's got three options I think I've got to put three in there from this one. Oh, oh 
Right, got it. Okay. Well, I haven't got it, but I've got one digit. I've got to put odd numbers into these circles. But what odd numbers can I pick from in putting these odd numbers in? Well, the answer is 1s, 3s and 5s, because I'm not allowed to put 7s or 9s or any more 7s and 9s in this backward C shape. So I've got 1s, 3s and 5s to choose from. Well, this square can't be 1. This could be 3 or 5. But this one, this one can't be 1 because of the 45 cage, and it can't be 5, so that's a 3. Uh, right, so that... Right, now this can't be a 6. This is just... It's so clever the way this has been put together. This can't be 6 now because that would need 1, 2 and 3. And if it's 8, it must be 1, 2, 5 because it can't now be 1, 3, 4. So it's either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 2, 4 depending on whether it's 7 or 8. Now one thing in common there along with the 1 is there's definitely a 2 in here which means that's not a 2. It also means this is not a 2. So this has got to be 6 or 8. And it can't be 6 because you can't put a 6 in the green. It's 8. That fix... Oh, this bounces back down here. This is 7. That means this is 1, 2, 4. We can get rid of the corner pencil marks and put the exact option in. Now this is a 6. Um, okay. So now... Well now this has to be a 4, doesn't it? by exactly the same logic because it can't be a 2 or an 8 and it can never be a 6 because I can't put 6 in green so that that's a 4 and then this one this one has to be a 2 because it can't be a 4 and it's not possible for it to be an 8 because I can't repeat the 8 so that becomes a 2 that gets rid of 2 9 as an option here 2 uh, we don't quite know where 2 goes in box 8. It's in one of those three. But now I must know... Ah, yeah, okay. Now if we look here, I know this digit now. I think this has to be a 3. Because the composition of this down here, I've got two 4s in the purple. I've only got one four so far here. So one of these eight totals must be one, three, four. We know one of them is one, two, five. Now, if one of them is one, three, four, either this one or this one, that means there are two threes in the green. And I've only got one three in the green so far. So that's a three. Um... Okay, it didn't it didn't really do very much, but it's still another digit. Okay, so what do we do next? Those squares have got to be two, three, six, and seven to complete the box. Ah, this is just, this is a brilliant puzzle. Full stop, this is brilliant. Every deduction in this puzzle is a pleasure. It really is. Look at this. I've got two, three, six, and seven in here. So what can't this be? Well, this cannot be a six, seven in this domino. So this, these three squares have got to have six and seven in them. And that means that cannot be a six or a seven, and it is an eight, and that gives us three. And that's not a three anymore. Oh dear, I went wrong. I just want to get rid of three from that, not change it chromatically. Um, so now, look, ah, where does eight go by Sudoku? It has to go there. Eight's in one of these three squares. Four 
Um, four can't be in this domino. So four is in one of those three positions. I don't, ah, it's not in this one. So four is in this domino. Two is in one of those cells. Uh, okay, I'm stuck again. Um, oh, I tell you what I can do that's simple. Well, now I've got three here. This total, this must be a one four total to make eight. So this is one two five coming down here. Now, do we know anything about the order of this? Yeah, I know there's a one in one of those. So this is a two or a five. I feel like I must be very close to being able to disambiguate all of this stuff on the right hand side now. Just can't quite see how to do it. Um, It's a fascinating puzzle though, because even now, even though I've got a tremendous amount of the grid filled in, I'm not exactly sure where I should be looking, to be honest. Um, let me see. Probably I've got to do more Sudoku. That's probably where I need to look. So threes have got to be in this domino here. One in the bottom row is quite restricted. Look, it's either got to be there or there. One, three. Um, oh, eight. Where does eight go in this box? It can only go there, I think. So that means eight, that locks eight into one of two positions in box eight. Hmm, okay. So I've not yet placed five and nine in this box. So this square has to be a five or a nine. I've not placed, actually look at that, I've not placed two in row five. This two here is not, there's no two in those squares, so there must be a two in one of those positions. And that's beautiful, because now I've got a two in this little foursome, I've got a two in this domino, I've not yet placed a two in row one, or column one of the grid. And in fact, look, uh, well, one way to look at it is this can't be a two. Because if this was a two, we'd have three twos in columns two and three. And here's a secret for you. There's only one two in this column, and there's only one two in this column if you do the Sudoku correctly. So that's a five. This is a one. This must be a two. This must be a four. Um, because once, once this is a one, we know this isn't a two because the two's in there. That's how I did that. Um, four by Sudoku is now here. which means four is making its appearance in one of those squares at the bottom. Now, can we do some, yeah, we can. This one is now pointing back over here and this must be a one. This five is pointing back over here and the two and the five get fixed. That means we know where the two goes in this two, three, four triple, it's got to go there. We can't now put a one in either of these squares by Sudoku, so the one can only go in one position in the 45 cage. And similarly, the one can only go in one position in that 45 cage as well. This square's got to be a five or a nine to complete the 45 cage. One's got to go here by Sudoku. We might be able to get all the ones here, I think. Um, Oh, maybe not. Look, one's in one of those two positions. Can this be a one? Maybe. 
Okay, all right, so where do we look next? We've got five in this box has got to be in this domino. So it got, it's got to go here. Once we get the five here, we get the eight using our pencil marks. This is no longer eight. There's an eight in here. This becomes a five eight pair. That fixes the eight back over this side of the grid. It's got to go down at the bottom. These two squares now are six and seven, which means that this square is a six by Sudoku because I don't know where the six goes. Oh, I do know where it goes. Where does six go in this box? It can't go here. It's not odd. And it can't go there because there's a six, seven pencil mark. So the six goes here. That means this is a three. That means this is a six by Sudoku. These squares here are three, four, and nine, which we can probably do. Let me try and figure that out. We can put, uh, okay, I can't quite figure it out. Never mind. Two, three, seven here. Um, now in this row, this square here has got to be, four, in fact, let's look at these squares together. They've got to be four, seven, and nine. And these two cannot be seven, so the seven can only go there. These two squares become six and nine. We can do the order, lovely. nine in this box now i don't know quite where it goes but it's in one of those two positions so it fixes this one as a four that fixes the four and the nine over here those three ah these three if these three squares are known this must be a nine and that fixes the the five through the medium of this 45 cage which fixes the nine into that cell now those two squares have got to be two and seven in some order. This square is now known. That's got to be the other digit, which I can't scan. <laughs> what is that? Five, I think. Five. And that's a uh, seven. And these three squares are known. They are six, five, six, and seven, in fact. So we're, I think we're closing in on, this is a two, three pair. That means those three squares are six, seven, and nine. This can't be nine. Three. Ah, ooh, here's a nice one. Three and four. In these, so in these dominoes here, we've got threes, and there's a three here. So we know that the three in this column is in one of those two squares. Look at the fours. Works exactly the same way. In fact, the fours are even better. The four in box three has to go there, and that places the three as well. That's going to put, oh, it does. It puts huge pressure on the 10 cage. Can't be three, seven, can't be four, six, can't be two, eight. So it is one, nine, and the one can only go there. So that's one, that's nine. That fixes the nine and the five over there at long last. Three is not in those cells. Two, five, six, and seven. Um, this must be nearly done now. This is a six or a seven. Oh, these are both odd. They're both odd, and there's one, three, nine in the box. So these are five and seven, and we know the order. Five and seven. That means that's six. That means this is seven by Sudoku. These two squares have got to be two and eight, and we obviously know the order of those. The two fixes the two and the three, the three and the four, the four and the one. The seven fixes the seven and the six. This square now is a nine. This is a six. This is a seven. This is an eight. This is a five. This five here fixes the five and the six. Uh, that one's not six. Now these two aren't seven, so this becomes a two, three pair. Gives us the seven and the six, gives us the seven and the two, the two and the three get done, the three and the nine get done. We click check and that is a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Lish dash, that is really, really fantastic. I love that. I mean, the beginning is very difficult um, until you have the thought. Once you have the thought, it's okay. Um, although even the use of parity is very, very original. I loved that, and then I loved the way you could slowly 
distinguish what digits were required in each of these shapes. It really is a clever puzzle, this. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do read them. I do really appreciate them, especially when they're kind. And we'll see you later on for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.